And now with a preview of today's game and a look at what's happening at the ballpark, it's time for the Ameren, Illinois pregame show. Let's send it down to the field and check in with the voice of the Chiefs, Nathan Beliva. Thank you, Lee. Welcome out to Dozer Park as we get ready for uh, home game number two of the season, overall game number four in front of our dugout. I'm Nathan Believe. I'm joined by Brendan Donovan, who was our peak in insurance beyond the expected player of the game yesterday. A couple hits, uh, three walks, three runs scored, uh, another another explosive game offensively for the Chiefs. Eight runs yesterday, so uh, the bats have been getting going, and you got it going yesterday, leading off for the first time this year, and you, you let off with your first professional home run. And uh, family was here, so it had to be an overall great night for you last night. Uh, what was going through your uh, your mind that first about your circle on the bases? Um, I was uh, honestly, I was just thankful for the wind. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty wind dated, so I was happy. But uh, yeah, it was beautiful weather last night. We had a good crowd and a pretty good opening opening night here at uh, Dozer Park. You guys have got the offense going that that first day. It was not uh, weather was not as nice that first day up in Cedar Rapids and 10 runs though. So that kind of that kind of warms you guys up in the. Uh, the dugout, right? When you're getting getting to run around the bases, getting all those runs going. Uh, unfortunately, no, it was freezing. No, it's freezing. Cold, okay, so <laughs> but, that, did, uh, yeah. that didn't help. We had hoodies and beanies on, and yeah. we were just trying not to uh, be in the field too long. Who was uh, who was the coldest? Who was the most miserable in the dugout? Was it one of the, was it one of the Latin guys? Was it who can you throw uh, under the bus that was, that I'm was gonna, miserably cold? I'm gonna throw Jim Boyles under the bus. Um, he was definitely the coldest in our dugout. He'd been here for like two hours. I know, that's why. <laughs> that's why. That's why. Uh, when you guys get going uh, on offense like that, like in last night, obviously didn't didn't get the win, but still got eight runs, uh, had a chance there at the end of the game with a couple guys on base. It, it seems like with this crew, we've only seen you guys for three days, but it gets a little bit contagious. What, what's going on in the, in the dugout situations like that when your guys are kind of zoning in on the other team's pitcher? Um, my best way to describe it is it's kind of like a party. Everyone wants in on it, you know. Yeah, and, and you guys got that going. You got it going with the home run. Then we got two more. Uh, Newt Barnow's got a couple of them, and uh, Zach got his first last night as well, going to his first game. But Ivan got you guys going and get the uh, the 18-year-old gets the first home run of the year, and uh, you guys kind of go back and forth on some ages. We got some 18-year-olds up to 24. How do you kind of wrap that all together? Um, being kind of in between, it's yeah. hard to wrap my mind around how good these young cats are. But uh, it's nice you got some older guys in the clubhouse that can kind of mentor the younger ones. But, I mean, it, it's just a talented ball team from top to bottom. We got a nice mix of guys that came uh, straight out of high school, uh, guys that are from uh, other countries, and then guys like you that play college ball. What advantage uh, do you take from playing college ball like you did and having success at the college level and now being able to translate that to pro ball? Um, I think I, I enjoyed my college experience. The best thing for me is it made me mature quick, um, and that's something that helped me develop a schedule and a routine, and that's something that's helped me transition to the professional game. And, and you got the, the three years there. Last year, only four games in, uh, in state college with, with a wrist injury. I know those rehabs aren't fun when you're, uh, you're down there in, in Jupiter, sometimes uh, in West Palm Beach, you're down there by yourself or with a handful of other guys that are hurt. What was the hardest part of that process for you? Um, the hardest part was just seeing your teammates getting to play. I mean, obviously, you're rooting for them, but you want to be up there with them. But uh, it was tough. It, um, it makes you tougher, and it makes you just appreciate the good times a little more. A long season last year for guys that are drafted. When you go all that college ball from beginning of February and then all the way through playing the games, but now you guys got there this year in February, got to meet some new guys uh, uh, for you especially because you were down there in Jupiter last year, so didn't didn't get to meet all the guys. What's spring training like uh, for a minor league guy? You might walk in and see, what, 40, 50 new teammates that you haven't played with or maybe met for two or three days? Yeah, this it's kind of overwhelming your first couple of days. There's so many guys, but uh, – it's early mornings and it's uh, it's long hot days, but it's it's not too bad. Name tags? You guys have you guys have uh, you guys have name tags? So you can get to get to learn each other's names and all that good stuff. Yeah, you try to learn everybody's name, but there's just so many guys. Yeah, you guys all go nicknames anyway, so you're you're good with all that. Um, Cardinals, I know they bring some guys around. Where there's some uh, major leaguers that you got to kind of hang around or watch, learn learn from in spring training. Yeah, it's cool. We got to take uh, ground balls with some of the big league infielders and got just watching guys like Colton. You know, Colton Wong and Paul DeYoung is pretty cool. Yeah, he had, uh, I know you got Jose Okendo working with you guys uh, as well for an infielder. What was that like for you? Oh, Okendo's awesome. Um, he was with me in rehab too, so 
kind of got to learn from him all throughout the off season as well. So yeah, he's awesome. You guys uh, in the infield here and, and moving guys around, but how do you uh, you work together and, and learn where guys are going to be in double play situations for you up the middle with with Delvin or uh, or with Figgy and, and the guys over there at third base and Nolan and, and Josh throwing to you? What, what's that process like? Learning a bunch of teammates and, and especially turning double plays. I think the biggest thing is just communication. You got to tell them what you like and what you don't like and. They gotta ask you what you like and don't like, and you just build on it from there. I was watching the guys last night when you came back in after that home run. I thought you might get like the whole silent treatment and and number one all that, but they were uh, they were at the top stuff waiting for you. Yeah, surprise. Lars is usually the first one there for me. Yeah, he's he's the guy he's the guy ready to go for you. Yeah. W were you expecting uh, silent treatment, or does that go through your mind at all? I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty sped up. I didn't know. What but to you didn't expect. know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's good. That's good though. But you know, you, you lead off a game. That's what you gotta do. Now you gotta put. Pressure on Riley, right? So it's, it's his turn to do that to lead off a game, and you go back into the uh, the cleanup spot? Yeah, I think he'll be just fine. He'll be, he'll be just fine. You guys uh, get ready, get used to, to playing here at home. And uh, I know we didn't get batting practice the last couple of days. We'll, we'll get that rolling in here on uh, on Monday, but the uh, the weather sure has cooperated. So yeah. we uh, we got that we got that rolling. Uh, we, we get into the routine here. What's it been like for you kind of getting into Peoria, getting settled, and, uh, you know, host family and, and all that good stuff? Uh, first couple of days were just new schedule and everything, but I think we're starting to settle in now and you're starting to get to know everyone a little bit better, so it's nice. Cool. Well, great job uh, last night, home run uh, number one, and uh, thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, Brendan Donovan, our Pekin Insurance Beyond the Expected Player of the Game, and uh, thanks, Eric. Appreciate the uh, clapping there. We uh, get things rolling here. Game number two for our homestand. We're going to be home throughout the uh, rest of this week. Going through Thursday, Wisconsin comes into town next. They are the uh, affiliate of the Milwaukee Brewers. So we'll have Wisconsin in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Night games Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And we've got the day game on Wednesday, the education day, for the 11 a.m. So we'll have half-price tickets tomorrow for the 635 start against Wisconsin with our half-price ticket Monday. And then coming up on Tuesday, uh, one of our new promotions, Taco Tuesdays. We'll have $2 tacos at the concession stand for uh, Taco Tuesdays. We'll also have our uh, traditional Thanks for Your Service Tuesday. So we thank veterans and first responders uh, for all of their service. And we'll have uh, $3 tickets for uh, veterans and first responders on their Thanks for Your Service Tuesday. Then we've got our CityLink Bang for Your Buck Wednesday with the 11 a.m. Education Day start coming up on Wednesday. And then we get the uh, final game of this first homestand on Thursday night. It's our first Thirsty Thursday with the uh, $2 domestic beers and sodas, the $3 bratwurst and margaritas, $4 on the 16-ounce craft drafts, and also uh, college students get $5 tickets with a valid ID. So that gets us rolling through the first homestand before we head off to Kane County for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All the teams around the organization are uh, getting into their first series, their first homestands, and we'll take a look here on the video board at what the uh, other teams in the Cardinals organization did yesterday. Uh, some of them have already gotten action in today as well, but we take a look uh, at the uh, rest of the organization. Memphis was suspended by rain in the eighth inning last night against uh, Memphis, against Omaha. Excuse me. They finished that game today with a 5-3 loss and are now playing their regularly scheduled game for today. Springfield and Palm Beach, a bunch of former Chiefs on those teams, uh, eight in both lineups yesterday. They got things uh, rolling, but both, unfortunately, were uh, walked off in extra innings yesterday. Springfield falling 5-4 to Northwest Arkansas, and Palm Beach lost to Jupiter 8-7. Both of those games in extra innings, and uh, St. Louis fell yesterday to San Diego as well. And uh, former Chiefs having a lot of success in those games. Early Dylan Carlson got uh, his big home run for Springfield. Brian O'Keefe with a grand slam uh, over the last weekend as well for Springfield and up in Palm Beach. A uh, couple of RBI, Yariel Gonzalez and Luke and Baker as well as we check in on former Chiefs throughout the organization. So that's going to get our uh, interviews and our pregame show finished up here for today for our first Sunday. Don't forget, players will sign autographs on the concourse following the contest today. We thank you all for coming out and spending your Sunday with us here at Dozer Park.